Let's determine the size of the guidelines that we want. First, draw a baseline with a pencil and straight edge. We'll say that the body height of the letter forms we want to do today, perhaps an italic or a black letter, is going to be five nibs tall. So let's take a broad edge nib. In this case, it's going to be two millimeters, and we'll make a little stairway here. We'll make it five nibs tall on our paper. After we've made our stairway five nibs tall, we'll come back with a pencil, and we'll make a little mark at the top. Then we'll come back with a ruler, and we'll make a line straight across to show the top of the writing line. Then, measuring the distance between the two lines, we can see the height of our writing line is going to be 10 millimeters tall. Don't assume the math will work out. A 2 millimeter nib times 5 nibs tall will be 10 millimeters in theory. But in practice, if you have a paper that's unfortunately too porous or an ink that's too thin, it plumps up the cumulative height of the writing line to 14 millimeters tall. Be precise in making your little stairway of nibs. If they are overlapping or not straight, the writing line's height will turn out to be either too short or too tall. This page from your set of original guidelines has writing lines that are 10 millimeters tall. Although this page seems to be printed out in black on white, it's really printed in a very specific percentage of gray. This is unique because it's going to allow you to print copies of it for yourself from off copiers or printers at much lighter or darker settings for your particular work requirements. This is our original page from the set of guidelines which, once again, seems to be printed black and white, but it's not. It's actually printed in a specific percentage of gray which will allow you to reproduce copies, either at lighter or darker settings. Here is a lighter copy. There are times you'll want to directly letter on the sheet that you've copied the lines onto. If the lines are lighter, they won't obstruct your seeing the fine details of your letter forms, particularly important if you're doing something more delicate or at a smaller scale. In this case, you don't want to have overly dark or heavy lines that would contend with or distract from your lettering. This is a darker copy, often used to slip under another sheet of paper that will be written upon. You can see the guidelines through that piece of paper because they're so very dark. You can make these dark lines either on paper or on a transparency. If you're using a light box, say for addressing envelopes or filling in certificates, I highly recommend using a transparency. The sheet of paper in back is actually a very good piece of Arches watercolor hot press paper. This is an excellent paper to do original lettering on. Using a very good paper to practice on, such as Arches, will help you to transition from practice to real work. It helps to eliminate the apprehension and fear that beginners feel about using good paper. Don't think you're wasting money in doing this. You're actually giving yourself the opportunity to know what feels good and right. The only way to do this is to practice on good paper. Getting your guidelines on that paper in an easy, efficient way encourages you to grow into better work practices. Many of the better calligraphy papers only come in larger parent sheets. You'll need to take a little time to cut out 8.5 by 11 sheets that you can feed through a copier. When you're trying to delineate something very delicate, like these drawn serifs at the bottom of the pressurized Romans, they should be very precise and graceful. If you have very dark lines, they're not going to allow you to easily see the delicacy of the shape and weight that you want to create in your letters. The light lines don't contend with the weight or details of your letters. When you have very dark lines, you tend to overcompensate and make the weights of your letters much more heavy weight and clubby and indelicate. 
This is another interesting comparison. At the very back on the far left, you can see that's an original page from the set of guidelines. Once again, it's a percentage of gray. Then, when you copy it onto a sheet of paper, such as in the middle on a very dark setting, you can see how much the guidelines have darkened. On the far right on top, you can see that we've reproduced the guidelines on a transparency on a darkened setting. This works particularly well when you're working on a light box because it lets all the light through the paper that's atop it. That's something I'd strongly recommend when you're working on a light box. That is, to reproduce your guidelines with a dark setting on a transparency. Whether you're doing envelopes or certificates, you'll see much more clearly through that singular sheet of paper with the transparency behind it than through the sheet of paper with guidelines and the piece of paper that you're lettering on. There are basically two different types of printers and copiers that you will have access to. The first one here, which many of us have at home, hooked up to our computers, is your typical all-in-one inkjet printer called all-in-one because it does a variety of tasks. We want it because it scans and copies. In making a copy, it squirts out inks onto the surface of a paper or transparency. If you do not get the correct kind of transparency, the inks will never dry. Then, when you touch the surface, it smears the inks all over. Make sure you get the correct kind of transparency. There are a lot of different brands of transparencies. I've tried several different brands and all have worked. On the packaging, it states very clearly which kind of machine it's to be used on. In this case, an inkjet printer. The other type of copier that you'll have access to is a photocopier. When you go into a copy shop, you usually just refer to it as a copier. This and the one following are very different technologies in contrast to the inkjet printers. This is a laser copier. So the photocopier and the laser copier have the same technology, in sharp contrast to the inkjet. When you get your transparencies, you want to make sure it says for copiers, not inkjet printers. Once again, clearly labeled on the packaging. All the different brands I've tried have worked. You can look on the internet and see which ones are the most cost effective for you. On the right hand side is the original guideline page from your set that is printed at a specific gray percentage. When you copy it at a lighter setting on whichever copier you have access to, you could expect to get something like the paper on the left hand side. The original guidelines printed at a specific gray percentage can then also be copied at a much darker setting for some of the reasons we just articulated. When you look at all three side by side, you can see the tremendous range that the guidelines can be reproduced at for the individual purposes of your specific needs on different projects. On most copiers and printers, it's very simple to change the setting for lightness or darkness for your copies. On the menu screen of your printer, very often you'll have to go through the settings first in order to get the lightness or darkness option. But on some menus, you may have immediate access to the lightness and darkness setting. So if you have to go through the settings first, choose that and it will bring up onto the screen the option for the lightness and darkness setting. And you choose from that. You simply choose the setting for lighter or darker and it brings you to the next screen. As you can see here, I've kept hitting the little button so that it's gone all the way to the far right, to the darkest setting. That's what I use to print the guidelines on both paper and transparencies in the darkness of lines I desire. These can be used to slip under pieces of lighter weight paper and see the guidelines clearly, or beneath heavier weight papers or envelopes when using a light box. In contrast, on this menu, I've gone all the way to the left to get the lightest setting. That's what I normally use when doing lettering directly on paper. In practicing on papers where the guidelines are nice and light, 
they don't obscure or distract from the details and nuances of letter forms, especially when the writing is at a smaller scale. This is an original guideline page from your set, printed at a specific percentage of gray. In some instances, you want to do lettering that has a slant to it. You will first and foremost copy the slant lines onto the piece of paper that you will be lettering on. Then you will use your writing lines page from your set of guidelines and print this onto the sheet of paper that you already have your slant lines on. Thus you wind up getting both slant lines and writing lines on the piece of paper that you actually want to letter on or use for a transparency. Let me show you that process right here. This is my all-in-one inkjet printer. I'm going to put onto the screen my slant lines from my set of guidelines. I place it on the screen of the scanner, decide the darkness or lightness that I want to copy it at, and then copy onto the piece of paper that I want to be lettering on. And then out it comes. I'm going to take that piece of paper and I'll set it aside temporarily. And then I'll take the original slant lines page off the screen. And in its place, I'll put the writing lines page onto the screen that I want to copy onto the final paper that I'll be writing on. Now I'll take the paper that I just made my slant lines on and I place it into my printer. Some printers you have to put the paper in facing down, some facing up. Refer to your manual or, like most of us, just use trial and error. I hit my copy button and out comes my paper with both slant lines and the guidelines. I'm ready to letter. You can make an almost infinite combination of slant lines and writing lines this way. Using this set of guidelines you have at your disposal. Happy lettering!